Next, this class we went back to this concept of top-down design and decomposition, which is computer science. Not programming, it is computer science. I would go as far as to say that, that top-down design is the whole foundation and the fundamental approach of computer science where we take big problems and we break them down into smaller problems, take those problems and break them down into even smaller problems. So I'll get you to watch the video and to do the quiz, I think I'm going to just talk through the definition that is the first answer in this quiz, just to make sure that before you go any further with this, you do get what we're talking about, even though you wouldn't have necessarily seen the video at this point. So did we get there or not? Right. That we use functions to decompose something to break I mean even this right this page is decomposed into two questions that's something more complicated broken down into less complicated things this question is broken down into four answers that's decomposition this particular answer is broken down into what's that seven words so decomposition 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 why do we use functions for decomposition to break down a program into smaller parts that is the answer well actually hold on and to avoid repeating code, and to make a program more readable. He talks about all those things in the video, at least I hope he does. And if he doesn't, I'm going to offer just a little bit more there that you've seen functions enough that um, you can appreciate that we do divide the program up into them. So we are taking this bigger problem and dividing it up into smaller things. This I'll get back to as we're going through some of the programs. But if I were to skip over, I wonder what I've got going on over here. That wouldn't do. Let's pick, take something. Let's take something else. So again, when we go back to this, you don't have to understand anything here. But but um, if I find a function like print line, okay, print line is a function that prints stuff. Oh, there it is again. There it is again. So I don't have to to rewrite what print line is, I just use it. So it is once. In fact, this isn't a, a function that I made myself. It's just a function that I use, but it's been made once. And having been made once, we don't have to keep on making it every time we want to use it. We just use it. Make our programs more readable. Yeah, they make them more readable because you don't just have line after line after line after line after line after line after line of simple coding. You have functions which group parts of the code. So it is all of the above. And all this I'll probably talk about as we go through the next uh, five or 10 minutes of, of this video. But yeah, functions do all those things. And in terms of the decomposition, in terms of this part of what functions do, big problem into smaller problems, this is the best answer. And so you don't even need to read any further. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna read this out myself. Top-down design is a way of designing your program so it is a designing. That's a good point. You know, top-down design is not programming as much as it is designing your program by starting with the biggest problem and breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces that are easier and easier to solve. This is all a little bit esoteric uh, for, at this point, a little bit hard to, to put into a context, but that will happen right now. So this is the example from the video. And again, watch the video. Hopefully you figured out how to use these YouTube videos in conjunction with the Code High School. But we don't just have 50 lines or 60 lines of turn left, move, put ball, turn left, move, put ball, which would, you wouldn't understand it. This is much easier to comprehend that what's start doing, well, it's calling other functions. We're going to run to the hurdle. We're going to jump the hurdle. We're going to run to the hurdle again. It'd be the same thing as we had just done. And we're going to jump the hurdle again, which is the same thing that we had just done. And then run to finish, which is one more step. So that's different than running to the hurdle. So that, that function, the start function, that shows us the order in which we're doing the rest of the program, we get it. We can look through it like reading 
the outline of a book, and we get it. Run to hurdle, jump the hurdle, run to hurdle, jump the hurdle, run to the finish. Okay. And then each of these functions also, on its own, ignore the rest. Just look at this function, run to finish. Move, 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 move. Okay, he's going to move four times. What's the difference between this and run to hurdle? Well, run to hurdle is only moving three times. One, two, three. It will be one, two, three, and then this is run to the finish. Okay, I get it. I get how that's different than that. I can see it now because it's not just all one big thing. We've broken this big problem down into different steps. And I could continue to look on down here. And the jump hurdle is a little bit more involved. He's going to be here. He's going to turn left. He's going to move. He's going to turn right. Move. He's going to turn right and move again. So he's going to get up and over. But, but I can understand that by looking at this. So just to review those three useful features of functions that um, they do break the program down. They do decompose it from being one big problem to being individual uh, problems, one at the time that we look at and work with. The other one was that it's just easier to understand. It's easier to understand each of them once they're broken down into something simpler. Those simpler things are easier to understand. And then the final advantage that you have functions is that we can reuse code. So for example, turn right, we only had to write W-R-I-T-E once. Well, we could call it as many times as we want. We're reusing it. So we do it here, and we do the four lines of code. We do it here. We don't have to do these over again. They just sit here. And we could call turn right a million times. We only have to define it once. So there are advantages if you want to stop that, rewind it, and take a listen again. Uh, you know, you don't have to understand this stuff completely and be able to regurgitate it immediately, but just letting it wash over you and... and the more times you hear me say these things, the more it'll make sense. So we've decomposed, made our functions simpler to understand, and we've reused a couple of them. So this one, you're going to end up doing three times, and because you're going to add stuff to it each time. The first time through, you're just going to just going to do it. Second time, I believe you're going to be using super corral functions of turn around and turn right. You'll see what that is in a moment. And I think the third time you're putting preconditions and postconditions, and you'll understand what that is when we get to it. But take your time. I think I gave them about 10 minutes for this, maybe, maybe a bit more. So take your time to do all those things that I've talked about in the other videos starting with understanding the problem. Make sure you read every word here. Uh, there's some really important instructions uh, to understand before you start it if you want to get the green sticker. So uh, yeah, I'll not do it, I'll let you do it. Just pause and take a deep breath and understand exactly what you're supposed to be doing here. And, um, and then you can go. Just remember those fundamental ways that you do it, not the what that you're doing, of testing, 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 with step through, step through, step through. So do as much as you want to begin with. I, I think what I might have done, though, so I'll do for you as well, is I might have said, if there were three functions that you're going to call or three different steps to this, building the tower would be one, which we repeat, building the tower. So that could be building the tower, and we do it again. But you got to get back down. So back down would be like a second step. And then after you've built the tower the last time, you need to go on top of it and turn right. So a good way to start this would be to say, OK, I'm going to move. I'm going to call it move to move to and build tower. I'm going to do that first. Then I'm going to move down. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to reuse this code to build the second tower. Only this time I need to go one more up and face right. So I'll call that 
whatever I want as long as it makes sense, like final, well, I've used this before, adopt final position. So there you go. You'll want to comment out these three because you're not going to make them before you run this. You're just going to make you're going to make this one first. And I'll even go so far as to start this one. So it's going to be a function, and it's going to be that. Okay. So from there, you can move to and build a tower. Do what you got to do. Test, 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 test. Does it look right? If you're not sure, go back, back, back. Try it again. Blah, blah, blah. So then when you got that, you can do your move down, and so on, and so on, and so on. I, yeah, and so for this one, you don't need preconditions and postconditions. Let me just copy this, and I'll move on. Oh, I guess it is... Yeah, I guess it is the commenting first. Okay, fair enough. So you watch the video about commenting your code. I'll talk a little bit about it. You do the quiz and I'll jump to hurdle Corel. And this will be hurdle Corel, which you've done before. And what's it got here? Yeah, so this is from the video. So Here's where I can give my take on preconditions and postconditions. Certainly listen to what Jeremy says in the Code High School video, but uh, yeah, so preconditions and postconditions, so, 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 so important. So we're back to the, it ain't much you do, it's the way that you do it. And um, every function, whether you're in a university program or a summer program or working for Yahoo, or yeah, where'd that come from? I was thinking Amazon. I guess Yahoo's still around. You should put preconditions and postconditions for each function. The idea with a precondition, run to hurdle. That would be a good one. So run to hurdle is the number of one, two, three. Right? He's finished jumping over it. One, two, three. So this will work to run to the hurdle if the preconditions are true. In other words, the preconditions are the things which have to be true for a function to work. So if we put Corel, I don't know, up here someplace facing north, and he goes, move, 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 well, we haven't solved the problem of running to the hurdle. We only solve the problem of running to the hurdle if, if it's the solution, if we start here. We start, uh, you know, facing east three spots away from the hurdle. So here it's going to work, and here it's going to work. Post conditions are what is achieved. Sometimes that can be painfully obvious, but sometimes it's not. In this case, yeah, run to hurdle, well, he's run to the hurdle. So what does to the hurdle actually mean, though? To be more specific, he is standing right in front of it. Fair enough. I'll do one more. Run to finish. Okay, run to finish. So run to finish will only work the way that we intend it if he is, or if he has the way that he's put it, if he has jumped the last hurdle and he's facing east. If he's jumped the last hurdle and he's facing south, then we do this, he runs into the wall. If he's facing north, we end up here, right? But if he's facing east and he's just got over the last hurdle, or you could say, the other way to say that Jeremy didn't hear, you could say that he's four avenues away from the bottom right-hand corner. But one way or another, you know, it's only when he is here that those lines will work. And post conditions, what has happened is he has run to the end of the first street and is facing east. So you're going to go back and one more time, and I did get them to do this again. They could have gone back and copied and pasted, but at this point um, we had the break and they came back and I said, do it again, do it again. Practice makes perfect. Michael Jordan has taken more free throws than anybody else. And you, you, know, you don't take one free throw and then you know how to do free throws the rest of your life, you practice. So try to do this, this again, only this time adding the 
comments, preconditions, what has to be true for the function to work, post conditions, what the function has achieved. And then you're going to look through uh, Super Corel video, which basically all this is going to tell you is that from this point on in our Corel the dog unit, you don't have to program turn right as turn left, turn left, turn left. You can just use turn right. And there's another one you can just use turn around. If you type turn around, open close parentheses, semicolon, Corel will be 180 degrees opposite facing where he was. So you can look through that. I think it's only a minute. And look at the quiz. And so we're back to the hurdles and back to the towers one more time. The hurdles will have been coded in the example with turn right. So if we look down here, we'll see we didn't program turn right, but we were able to use it because it now, from this point on, just works. Just like from the beginning, turn left to move and put ball and take ball have worked. So that you, uh, we probably played around this a little bit in, in the actual live class, but you're free to, to just look through that and appreciate that it's working slightly differently because we don't have the program turn right. And then we were running out of time, so I said, okay, in this case, you don't have to program it the third time. Just go on back to lesson seven or lesson eight and copy the code and change it so it works with Super Corel. So, and I will show you this part. It can be a little bit uh, unintuitive that these are all lesson eight, but you don't see an eight. You just see the seven and you see the nine, so I wish they would change that up a little bit. But you're now on 8.4, so you want to go back to um, the towers in seven. Yeah, that one. Copy it all. I don't think I finished it, so I don't, have, I don't have anything there, but you will. So copy all that. Go back to 8. Last one. Towers again. Paste it in. That'll be all the code. It'll be four or five functions. It'll be your preconditions and postconditions. And all you're going to do is take away the turn right function that you defined, and basically that's it. And then you'll be ready for the next lesson. And I think for you guys, I'll, I'll leave it there. I went a little bit further as a, as a preview, but I don't think we need to do that right now for this YouTube summary video. So you can get through those three, I think it was, lessons. That'll be, that'll be great. Certainly get in touch with me if you have any questions, but that's it for now.